Well, load shedding, a thousand degree heat and a hundred percent humidity here in Durban is certainly not my friend. I'm actually parked under a tree trying to get you some of this content that we've been missing out in the last couple of weeks. It's our first episode for 2023 on the Financially Fabulous Females YouTube channel. And today we're going to be breaking down the triple whammy that South Africans are facing. Early on this week, the interest rates have been hiked. The Reserve Bank has made this announcement that, um, yeah, they're hiking up interest rates. Inflation is at an incredible level. And here we have the Reserve Bank Commissioner indicating that uh, they're hiking by 0.25 basis points. What this basically means is we pay more to borrow if we have home loans, credit cards, uh, store cards, any line of credit. Now we're now paying more for the same line of credit. Okay. On top of that, we have this announcement made earlier this year, the highest electricity price increase since the last decade. Uh, Eskom announcing that uh, almost 19% increase that will be implemented for consumers in April 2023. And you can see on the graph there, uh, cbn.ca.za is the source of this. But you can see on this graph how the electricity increases have basically impacted us for the last 10 years or so. It's been horrid because we're getting less and less electricity, uh, more and more crappy service, and the prices are just astronomical. Okay, and all of this is going to impact our money uh, because uh, it's going to be driving up inflation. Uh, and the third part of that triple whammy is this one, where more wars for citizens as another petrol price hike increase expected next month, according to... Uh, auto, the Automobile Association of South Africa. So they're expecting about 57 cents per litre for 93, 52% uh, a litre for 95. And I don't think it's so, so bad for, for diesel. Okay, but uh, these three in combination, this is our energy uh, and it's our money as well. All of this is going to drive up inflation. So when the Reserve Bank hikes up interest rates, uh, we don't see immediate effects in the economy it's going to be like six nine maybe 12 months before the effects of the interest rate filter down into to the economy to reduce the use of credit to reduce the velocity of money um to try and bring down inflation okay but when you when you add on this energy increase where there's literal no exchange in value but the but there's higher uh, prices involved this is going to drive up inflation and it's the same with uh, the fuel prices as well and we see uh, in the months previous to this there have been slight fuel cuts but the prices of stuff have not dropped accordingly so it's going to be hard 2023 um, I mean if you are planning these major purchases vehicle upgrades things like that I mean I would reconsider uh, I would not be um, <laughs> upgrading my vehicle anytime soon because it's going to be a hard year and with crisis remember i mean if you've been watching our content for a while you know that when there's a crisis there's always opportunity so for me instead of paying high interest on my credit card high interest on store cards um and extra money that can go into my investments are now going on these energy costs i rather position myself to be in a place to capitalize uh, on this coming recession because when the recession happens um shares go on sale assets go on sale and that's where i want to be to to buy low and sell high whether you're selling tomatoes whether you were selling uh, or buying shares you're trading forex whatever the thing is you want to buy low and you want to sell high and that spread is your actual profits that's how you build wealth All right so i want to be in that position to be able to purchase these assets on the cheap uh when the peak of the succession happens and we find uh, over here the world economic forum recession 2023 that depends where in the world you are now as bad as recession is the impact that it will have on the mass scale is pretty negative but like i said if you are savvy enough to know where those opportunities lie you're going to capitalize on that and as they say where in the world it's not like you know the world economic uh, forum they have their own agenda of course i mean if you, if you this is an organization you follow you would know that but in our case as south africans with our failing infrastructure Although we have this uh, January 2023 triple whammy, in the next couple of months, wherever you are in the country, your municipality is going to be looking to increase the prices on top of that. Um, I'm in Itikwini. 
they add on to this Eskom price. They increase our property rates and they're going to be looking to increase. So the value that we're getting from um, the services that government should be providing is not there, but the price, price hikes are coming and that is picking up inflation. So let's have a look at what the World Economic Forum is saying. Recession in Euro uh, Europe. Well, Europe, they have this whole thing happening with Ukraine, uh, with Russia, and the predictions from the World Economic Forum, that their outlook is a global, global growth was trimmed by 0.2 two percentage points, while the forecast for the Eurozone was dr revised dramatically down to 0 0.5 from 1.20. Uh, All right, so there's going to be opportunities in Europe. Um, remember that the content of this of this video any anything of mine that you hear online is not financial advice so where i see opportunity here is is one euro stocks okay if they if they've um, devised this forecast down what will happen is it's market perception and uh, the markets will react accordingly and i will i will be looking to capital uh, capitalize on on euro stocks the IMF has forecast global growth slowdown to 3.2% in 2022, 2.7% in 2023, from 6%. That's a huge jump, all right, on global growth. This is the weakest, weakest growth profile since 2001. And why that time period is significant, because there was a slight drop in, in 2000 with a Y2K drop. Then there was the whole 9-11, the U.S. stock markets crash. Yeah, and the big one. For the last two decades was 2008 where it started off in the united states and then it spread globally i mean it took about 18 months to reach south africa but it definitely felt an impact and if this is the the worst predicted point higher than 2008 we are going to really be in for a rough 2023 and this is just for the rest of the world you know um if we go on to read this article let's look at it uh, where do the chief economists expect expect the risk of stagflation sub-saharan africa i i mean i mean we're driving a, a lot of that expect high inflation 33 percent expect weak economic growth at 68 percent uh look at uh weak economic growth for united states 91 percent uh inflation not so bad uh latin america and the Car caribbean weak economic growth 68 percent china east asia and the pacific 37 percent that's not bad south asia so uh india bangladesh uh, sri lanka their uh, low economic growth that expected is at 15 percent okay so plenty of growth potential there because their risk for weak economic growth is a little bit low europe at 100 percent so like i said opportunities uh once it drops over in europe you want to be buying once it drops over in the united states you want to be buying uh, South Africa, I think they, they already predicted a, a 2% drop in GDP because of the whole energy crisis. It's rolling, rolling uh, blackouts since September and it's only going to get worse. I, I, I remember reading an article where they're talking about stage 10, uh, stage 12 and uh, oh, I can just imagine the humidity at that time, right? It's going to be horrible. Here's some of the business challenges that the World Economic Forum is predicting. Um, they navigating a new landscape. 100% of geopolitical fault lines will continue to realign global economic activity. 63% global recession, chance of a global recession in 2023. 91% weak demand. Okay, so so that's huge for, for manu manufacturing, for um, production size things 87 percent high cost of borrowing now although south africa did raise their interest rates this week um, the rest of the world is, is doing the same same thing mainly because of their inflation and, and you know places like the united states uh, the uk they've been printing money to to fill in the gap while, while people were at home during lockdown while we were not exactly printing money but we were giving away money for free with those grants um, and when there's not that clear exchange in value, that's the kind of thing that drives up inflation. And this is how businesses will react. 86% reduce costs by cutting operational expenses. Now we see this happening in the tech center, uh, the tech sector in the United States. Uh, Facebook laying off people, Amazon laying off people, Twitter laying off people. I think it's only Apple that hasn't laid off as yet. But uh, hopefully they don't. I mean, it's not nice when people lose their jobs, but this is the reality of the business environment. I mean, uh, as a small business owner in South Africa, I'm horrified to, to, to grow my business because one, I have to hire more people. How do I hire more people in a recessionary environment? I need technology to survive. 
um, I mean, to to really back up electric, uh, electricity supply or power supply for, to run my business, to run the office is a huge investment. And uh, I'm not ready to make that. I, I need cash during times of uh, recession because clients are uncertain. Okay, obviously for bigger businesses around, uh, they're thinking along the same lines. Managers are thinking of uh, along the same line. Should we be hiring at this point? How do we cut our costs? Is a recession coming? And you should be thinking along these lines for your household. The 78% will be looking to lay off workers. Seven, another 70%, 77% to optimize the supply chain. So look, it's going to be a tough 2023. We can only look forward to brighter things in 2024. The best advice I can give you, this you can take as advice, right, is pay down your high interest debt. Uh, live simpler. I mean, it's going to be a hard year uh, in South Africa. Maybe if we dip into recession, uh, I mean, recession, like I said, comes with opportunities. The problem we have as South Africans is coming out of that recession where we don't have the infrastructure to keep the lights on, to keep the power running, to keep production running. To, and that has a chain effect. If the factories can't work, they're going to fire people. If those factories are, new, are closing down, the suppliers are affected. And, and it's that whole value chain and it's just a messed up situation. So... Please, if you have not planned for 2023, you've got to plan for it. Prioritize paying off debt. If you haven't done that, try and hold cash to until we reach the bottom. And, and I know that being said, it's very hard to time the market, but you can use other strategies such as RAND cost averaging to continuously be putting more money into your investments as it's going down and you're entering the market at different points and also continue to put in money as the market, as that wave comes up again. So that's a great strategy to hold in the long term as well. Stay away from credit. Right? That's a big one. Stay away from credit. Don't be in a rush to buy a house, to buy a car. Put off the cell phone upgrades. Um, just just live on the basic. Uh, cut down your household budget. I know it's not easy. Inflation is driving everything up. But um, just continue to educate yourselves about what's coming. Um, and brace for impact. And, and if you've, you've positioned yourself in the last couple of years, look out for those opportunities. And I'm going to be letting you know about all those opportunities on this um on this video podcast so make sure to to like this channel to subscribe so you'll be notified whenever i put out some new content and i'll catch you soon